Okay, so here we are. We're in chapter 4.1, 4.2. This is example number two. And let's just quick review. We have learned that stress equals that internal normal force over area. And stress equals E times strain in the elastic region. And strain is change in length over original length. And we can pop delta over L naught here and N over A here. And we can write this to the magical equation of NL over AE. And again, we could call this P, because a lot of times you'll see it PL over AE. It could be tension, TL over AE. It could be internal compression over AE. Um, but we have to be in that elastic region for this to work because we're using that modulus of elasticity. So we're gonna keep that in mind. So we have a system here. It is composed of aluminum. It's an aluminum member, A, B, C. It supports a load of 28 kilonewtons. Determine the, act, the value of load P such that the deflection at joint C is zero. So as we load this thing, I can see this one is in tension pulling up. This is gonna be pushing down at the end of the day. I don't want any motion up here at the top. Okay, and then find that deflection of joint B. So if this is getting longer and this is a compression, this has to be getting shorter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and summarize my material properties next to each piece just so I can look in one spot and have everything I need. So my E is 70 and a giga is times 10 to the ninth pascals, which remember is a newton per meter squared. My diameter is 0 0.032 meters, and my original length is one meter. Here, E is 70 times 10 to the ninth Newton per meter squared, that's a Pascal. My diameter is 0 0.05 meters, and my original length is 1.3 meters. So if I'm looking at this delta, I have the L, A, and E, I just need to go back and calculate internal. So as we start every problem, we're going to have a free body diagram in equilibrium. Okay, so um, when I'm cutting to find internal, it, you have to go back and think about statics. When we cut internal and we would show we could have an internal normal, an internal shear, an internal moment, we're going to find out we can have an internal torque. We have to show everything to the left or everything to the right. When I'm cutting a stacked problem, it's the same thing, everything above or everything below. So if I choose to cut here in the middle, because I know that my load doesn't change from C to B, that anywhere I cut, like a loaf of bread, anywhere I cut, it's going to have that same internal force, right? It doesn't matter where I cut. So free body diagram or free body diagram. If I choose to use the bottom here, I have to find my reaction. I have to include this reaction at A, okay, in my overall. So I'm gonna go from the top just to save me a step of finding reactions. So let's draw a little cross section. And we have 28 kilonewtons, which is 28 times 10 to the third newtons. And I'm gonna have an internal normal force from B to C. That's all I have. We could have shear, we could have moment, we could have torque, but we don't. It's purely axial loading. So let's sum our forces in the y direction. We're going to call up positive. So I have 28 times 10 to the third newtons minus the normal force in B to C equals zero. So that normal force from B to C equals 28 times 10 to the third newtons, which we know is tension. It's positive. Now I need to find the internal normal from B to C. It is not just a function of P. I have to include everything above or everything below. And again, if I include below, I have to find my reaction at A before I can begin. So I'm gonna start from the top again. I don't wanna to have to find any extra work. So here's the top portion with the 28 times 10 to the third Newtons, okay? Here's that bottom portion and I'm gonna cut somewhere in the middle, okay, somewhere in the middle. I have this force P that's being applied right here. And I know if this is in tension pulling up, this has to be in compression pushing down. I'm gonna draw it as going down just like it's shown. And I'm going to just assume I don't know that this has to be a compression member, okay? The math will work its way out. The math will tell me what is going on. So I'm assuming that that value P is pushing down. Okay, so I'm gonna have an internal normal force from A to B, and I'm assuming tension because I want 
everything to be uh, positive intention, negative in compression. And if I had a bigger system, I couldn't be so sure that this is compression. But this one's pretty easy to see, tension, compression. But So just assume it's intention. We are now going to sum forces in the y direction. Up is positive. I have 28 times 10 to the third minus P minus normal from A to B equals 0. So normal from A to B equals 28 times 10 to the third minus P. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So I now have my internal normal forces. If I wanted to look at deformations, which a lot of times I'm like, go ahead and draw a free body diagram of deformations. Okay, I'm going to look at my whole picture. And that's a really bad picture. So we're gonna redo that because I can't, I can't live with that, okay? I can't live with that at all. So let's just draw it a little bit neater and a little bit, there we go. How's that look? So I know that I can see that we're gonna have deformation coming up. So I'm gonna have that delta from C to B, okay? P is coming down. We know that, but we're just like, we're assuming it's in tension. We don't know that this is truly in compression, but when it's pulling, when it's pulling like that, it's in tension. So let's just, okay, this is also having a change. Delta A to B. So there's my deformation, and I know that delta overall has to be zero when I'm looking at C. So delta CB plus delta AB equals zero. And delta equals NL over AE. Okay. Now, third step. Check if we're elastic. So I have my statics. I have my internal forces. I have my deformation. And we have to make sure that the internal normal force from A to B is less than the yield stress, less than the yield stress of aluminum. And so how do I find that? Well, I know that the normal of A to B, okay, is, well, we don't know P yet, so we'll check that later. I can go ahead and check the normal stress here from B to C. Equals 28 times 10 to the third Newtons divided by cross-sectional area, pi over 4, 0 0.032 meters squared, and I'm going to get a value, okay? I can already tell you that this is less than yielding, but you have to check, otherwise this is not a valid way. You have to go to the stress strain curve, so it's checking elastic. So now we're gonna set up our compatibility relationship where delta CB plus delta AB equals zero and delta is that normal over AE. So let's start with C to B. I have 28 times 10 to the third Newtons length. I have one meter, A, 0 0.032 meters squared, E, 70 times 10 to the ninth, Newton per meter squared. So everything's in Newton per meters. Plus, remember, we, we, don't, we don't know if this is tension or compression. If it's a bigger system, you couldn't unequivocally say it was one or the other. So we're just, here's my equation. It'll work itself out, I promise. So now I need to do delta of AB. So the internal is 28 times 10 to the third minus P times 1.3 meters is our length divided by pi over 2, 0 0.05 squared times 70 times 10 to the ninth. And all of this added together has to equal zero. Okay, it has to equal zero. So before I get all calculator happy, I'm gonna note that I could multiply my whole system by pi over two, it goes away, times zero, it goes away. I can even take that E out of the, out of the, the equation. And so I am left with a little bit smaller pieces. So let's go ahead and bring this down. I have 28 times 10 to the third times one meter. We're gonna just throw that out, divided by 0 0.032 squared plus, okay, I need to simplify, simplify this equation. So I'm gonna multiply 1.3 times 28 divided by the diameter minus 1.3 times P, same thing. So we have plus 28 times 10 to the third, okay, times 
divided by 0 0.032 squared, okay? Positive times a negative is a negative, minus 1.3p divided by 0 0.05 squared and I think that I screwed up right here because I cannot transfer numbers over 0 0.05 squared okay so we have 28 divided by 0 0.032 and then we have 28 times 1.3 divided by 0 0.05 minus 1.3 and this equals 0 okay well I'm going to add both sides by this term to get rid of it on the left and put it on the right. And so I'm just going to do my little magical erase and voila equals. So now I can put these two numbers together. I can multiply through by 0 0.05 squared to divide by 1.3 and I should get a value of P. Okay, I should get a value of P. So let's do that. I have 28 e to the third, enter. 0 0.032 divided by 0 0.032 divided by, okay? I have 28 e to the third, 1.3 times 0 0.05, 0 0.05 divided by plus. So I've now put everything together here. I'm going to divide by 1.3 and multiply through. And I get this, this number that looks ginormous. But remember, we've been in kilonewtons. Okay, so when I look at this, this is in Newtons because I've been working in Newtons. So I get that P, I get that P equals 80,584 Newtons. So P equals, okay, P equals 80.584 kilonewtons. And I want you to think about this, okay, think about this. If 28 kilonewtons makes this system which has a much smaller diameter, have a delta, then if I have a much larger cross-sectional area and it's much longer, it's going to take a significantly bigger value of P to make the same deformation here, right? And, and you're like, oh, but you got a positive value and it's in compression. How does that make sense? Let's go right here now and look. What happens if I take NAB and I take 28 times 10 to the third, minus 80.5 times 10 to the third. Look at that, I get a negative number. So I am in compression. It does work out. If you just let the math do the work for you and quit trying to like fix everything, you'll find that yes, this came out in compression. It is making this middle piece in compression. Perfect, perfect. So there's my answer for P. And then it says, what is the corresponding deflection at point B. So here at the top, it's an overall zero, but let's look at point B. So that is going to come from, that is going to come from the change in length from A to B. Point B is coming along uh, from the change in length of point B. So delta B, delta A to B equals that internal normal, okay, that internal normal force of A to B, the length of A to B, the area of A to B, and the E to A to B, and we're going to have, what is our internal normal of A to B? It is actually 28 times 10 to the third minus 80.584 times 10 to the third, okay, that's our internal normal. Remember, we've got to include everything. This is just P but the internal normal is that whole business. My length is 1.3 meters, okay? My um, cross-sectional area is pi over four d squared. And my modulus of elasticity is 70 times 10 to the ninth. So everything is in uh, newtons, meters, meters, newton per meter squared. And so now we can calculate this out. And look at this magic that's going to happen. Look at this magic. That's a negative. 28 times 10 to the third plus, look, oh my gosh, I multiplied. 28 e to the third, enter. And then I have 80.584 10 to the third, e to the third minus negative value. That's going to get my negative displacement times 1.3 divided by pi over 4, 0 0.05 times, 0 0.05 times, okay, divided by, and then 70 e to the ninth divided by 
and I get this very tiny value. Um, negative 1.243 times 10 to the negative fourth meters. Remember that's in meters. So now we can multiply by a thousand and I get that my delta at B is negative 0 0.124 millimeters or I could call it 0 0.124 millimeters down. Okay, so that makes sense. It's in compression, it's gonna go down. That means the stretch here, the stretch here has to be that same value, pulling it back up so that at C we see zero displacement. So there you have it.